Hi, I'm Jan, owner of the Cherry Pit Quilt Shop in Sevierville, Tennessee. Today I have with me Theresa, who is an employee, and we're going to show you how to make your binding to put on a quilt and then show you how to put it on a quilt. Um, so we're going to start off with, we cut our binding two and a half inches wide. Some people cut it two and a fourth. That's a personal choice. So first thing you want to do is press this in half just a little bit, not all the way to get it started. Then, this is the neatest thing we have found. It's called quilting hearts, but it's, it's also called binding ease. So next thing we're gonna do is, what we've already pressed in half, feed it through these slots right here. Okay, that's just what we've pressed, is through the slots. Lay the hot iron right here, and we're not gonna touch it. We're gonna leave it just like it is. So you have two hands free. Now, before we found this, this is how we did binding. We would fold it in half press, set the iron down, fold it half and press, set, we had to go back and forth. Now we don't have to. You set the iron down, you use your left hand to press it in half, your right hand pulls your binding through, just like so. So you're pressing it as you go, and you do not have to pick that iron up and down multiple times. Now, binding for a quilt could be mm, hundred, lot, very long. long. <laughs> so you've got a long ways to go. Um, the mat that this is sitting on will get hot. This pink thing, will, the binding ease mat will get hot. So keep that in mind when you get done. But you just keep folding and pulling to get your binding all the way to the end all the way through that, under that hot iron. And the iron does have to be hot for it to work. There we go. Now remember, this is hot. Be very careful when you pick it up to move it out of the way. There we go. Binding is pressed in half. Binding does have to be in half to go on a quilt. It has to be put in half, okay? So then your next step is, and we're using placemats as our demo, but to put it on a quilt, you find your starting point, Make sure you leave a tail. Don't start at the end sewing. You have to leave a tail and start sewing your binding on. Quarter inch. You have to stop at the corners to turn your corner. You stop and take it out of your sewing machine. You do not leave it. So when you come to a corner, we have this little measuring gauge tool that's pretty neat. Some people have these. They just don't know what it's used for. It has different measures. We're going to use the quarter inch, which is right here. So this quarter inch, there's the straight edge. That's our quarter. You have your binding laying here. You're going to match the straight edge with the edge of your quilt where you're fixing to turn the corner. And then you're going to take some kind of a marking pen, not permanent, chalk, something that will disappear, and put a dot in that corner where you stop sewing, all right? So in other words, you're gonna now sew this side and you're gonna stop at that dot right there. That's where you stop sewing. Then it's time to turn your corner. So you, are, you have that sewn. You flip it back this direction where it is sewn down. So you have an angle like this. And then you fold it back over and then you continue to sew to your next corner, stop, mark it, and continue to sew around your quilt. Okay? Now we have it completely around, but it is not together. Okay? We have to sew these two pieces together. This little ruler happens to be two and a half inches wide, which is the perfect size we need, because you're going to trim this piece off. This is the end of your binding. This was the beginning, this is the end. You're going to trim this off so that this overlaps two and a half inches. And it overlaps whatever the size of your binding is. So if you cut your binding two and a fourth, then it overlaps two and a fourth. So we're going to lay this ruler on the bottom one. And then we're going to lay this on top of it and we're going to trim it at two and a half. Remember, this ruler was two and a half, so we know exactly where to trim it off. So we've trimmed it using that ruler, and now we have these. 
it overlaps two and a half inches. So here's something you need to remember. It's laying there the way it needs to be sewn. Take the top one, open it up like so. Take the bottom one. So now you're going to put right sides together. So the left piece is on the bottom, the right piece is on the top, and you're going to lay it like a T or a cross. You are going to sew at a diagonal from this point to this point. Now we've drawn a line on here. Some people do, some people pin it. You decide how, what's the best way for you to draw your, to sew that diagonally across. Now, when you get it sewn, be, you do have to trim this, but before you get it sewn, make sure it lays flat like this because if you sewed it the other way, the binding is twisted. So then you have to take it out. And if you've trimmed it, then you have to take it out and kind of start some things over. All right, so we've overlapped it. The left one goes on the bottom. The right one goes on the top. You sew it at a diagonal. Then you have your binding. It's going to lay flat, and you finish sewing a quarter inch seam, so your binding's on your quilt. Now, you have to turn this to the right side, and I hand sew my binding down. I prefer that. Some people prefer it another way. So I used to pin this until my daughter decided that I needed to use these little clips so I didn't stab my finger all the time. So I flip my binding over, put the clips on, and then I hand sew my binding. When you come to the corners, if you measured it correctly, your corners should turn just the way you want them to with an angle. You shouldn't have an issue of turning your corners. Out, over, and there's my angle. And clip that down. So then you're ready to hand sew this down. Okay? Now, Theresa likes to do her binding a little a different way, but you get the same results. So I'm going to let Theresa show you how she sews her binding on the, her quilts after it is sewn on. Okay, uh, so Jan showed you how to uh, use the clips. I'm going to show you how to use glue. And this is called an acorn piecing glue. It's really a nice glue. Some people applique with it. I use it to put my binding on. And um, uh, But anyways, I'm going to show you how to do this. And it takes just a little drop. It is not a permanent glue. It is something that just holds it until you can sew it. So you can actually pull it up if you do something wrong and start over. So, but anyways, when I'm doing my quilts, I'll do maybe three or four inches from the corner so I can get a good corner. And it only takes like a drop, about every half inch to an inch. And I'll even, there we go, let's do it on both sides here. Okay. And it's a heat set glue. So you're going to fold it over. And you're going to heat set it with your iron for about, I don't know, I do about 10 seconds to make sure it's down. Okay, the other side. I've already got the glue on it. Just going to Bring it over. Another 10 seconds or so. And there you go. It's going to be down until you sew it. And you put it on your, I do mine on the machine. That's why I do it this way and uh, it'll hold until you sew it on the sewing machine. So there you go, another way. Hey, thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed learning how to put binding on a quilt. Come see us sometime in Sevierville. Our shop hours are Monday through Friday, 10 to four, and Saturday, nine to one. Have a great day.